Hi, this is Abdul Karim from Khalij Times, and in this video, we're looking at the world of social media platforms and their dominance over the last few years. Though leading into this decade, we entered the age of smartphones. It was then we moved on from texting away on the keypads of our favorite Nokias to faster, thinner gadgets. And however, it was in this decade that we saw our user habits change, paving the way for phone developers to compete for the smartphone penetration. If we look at at beyond the processor speeds and the camera specs, it really is the apps and social media platforms that really got us hooked onto our gadgets. Let's have a quick glance at how social media has evolved. In 2010, we saw the launch of Pinterest and Viber. In 2011, we welcomed Snapchat, Google+, Twitch and WeChat. We also saw Microsoft's $8.5 billion acquisition of Skype. In April 2012, Facebook announced a $1 billion deal to acquire Instagram, which at that time was only referred to as a photo sharing app. That same year, in May, Facebook went public and held its initial public offering with share prices starting at $38 per share, which allowed them to raise $16 billion. At that time, it became the largest technology IPO in US history. Let's move on to Snapchat. In 2012, Snapchat became the talk of the town thanks to the release of the 10-second video sharing option. That app that allowed sharing of multimedia messages that will self-destruct in about 10 seconds. From 20 million photos being shared per day today, in 2019, there are 2.1 million snaps being shared every minute across the world and now stands at a user base of 203 million users. In the summer of 2013, while Vine skyrocketed in its popularity, Instagram joined the world of video sharing and allowed its users to shoot and share 15 second videos. They've certainly come quite far thanks to the long form of sharing on IGTV that we see today. For the gamers, 2013 was a great year as Sony PlayStation 4 and Xbox One entered the market. Both revealed sales of over 1 million units on the first day of their release. We also saw the launch of the portable gaming console Nintendo Switch, which was sold at a price of around $300 and is believed to have sold over 41 million units worldwide. In 2014, Musical.ly was launched, offering users 15 seconds to one minute lip-syncing music videos. Three years later, the app had reached 200 million users before being bought by ByteDance Technology Co. for $1 billion to remain in the public limelight as only TikTok that we see today. In February 2014, Facebook purchased the messaging service WhatsApp for $19 billion. It was a cause of concern for the buyers because WhatsApp was outpacing Facebook Messenger at a rapid pace. According to analysts, WhatsApp was sending 8.2 billion messages a day compared to Facebook Messenger's communication on mobile at 3.5 billion messages a day back then. In 2015, Periscope was launched as an app that let users live stream whatever was happening around them for anyone who wanted to watch. Instead of YouTube, where a viewing experience was passive, Periscope was active. In the same year, Twitter acquired the app for what they described as a sizable amount, while analysts predict the deal to be above $50 million. In 2016, the world's first online DVD rental and sales store made its online streaming service available across the globe in 2016. Netflix was launched in 130 countries, bringing the global entertainment service to 190 total countries around the world. Today, it has established itself as the world's leading streaming entertainment service with over 158 million paid memberships. When it comes to the business end of things for the year 2016, Microsoft announced a $26.2 billion acquisition of LinkedIn with an aim to grow the professional networking site and integrate it with Microsoft's enterprise software such as Office 365. Towards the end of the decade, we saw the shutting down of Yahoo Messenger in 2018. No reason was given for the closure. Yahoo Messenger was one of the first instant messaging apps created, but it struggled to keep up with modern apps like WhatsApp, 
Facebook Messenger and Snapchat. 2019 also saw the demise of Google+. Its phase-out was largely due to low usage and it turned into something of a security liability for Google with two significant data leaks. Google had also acknowledged that Google+, Plus failed to meet the company's expectations for user growth and mainstream pickup. And these were our biggest stories of the social media world throughout the decade. Let us know in the comments section below about the type of apps you expect to be launched in the years ahead and the ones that remain your favorite at the moment. Thank you for watching. It's goodbye for now.